So thanks for organizing it. Uh, okay, let's start. So today I'd like to chat about uh, data processing uh, program in OpenStack, code name Sahara. My name is uh, Sergey Lukyanov. I'm a PTL of Sahara project. Uh, and so let's start with a small overview of the killer uh, things done. Next slide, please. Okay, and uh, so first of all, let's, let's define what a Sahara is and what's the goal. So Sahara is a project to provide a scalable data processing stack, and as I said, it's known as interfaces. And so there are two main uh, directions. The first one is to provision and operate the data processing clusters, and the second one is to schedule and operate the data processing jobs and workloads. So the first one is about the deploying the Hadoop cluster, for example, or any other data processing clusters. Now Sahara supports Spark and Storm as well, in addition to the Hadoop. And the second direction is about running the big data, data processing jobs on top of the already deployed clusters. Next slide, please. Uh, the ETP functionality is a lasty data processing. It's a Sahara take on data processing workflow management. It's, it's a code name of the uh, the second direction of Sahara goals. Next slide, please. Um, so there are some, some numbers for the killer release, and uh, let's, let's uh, not uh, spend time on it. It's just uh, increasing as always from the release to release, and the numbers are pretty doubled uh, comparing to the overview that we done a year ago. Next slide, please. Um, so, what what was new in Kila? Uh, during the Kila, there were a few new plugins introduced and uh, new versions supported to existing clusters. So, the newcomers to the Sahara plugins repository is a Mopar plugin. It's one of the distribution of Hadoop with a custom, uh, very high performance uh, distributed file system and Apache Storm. Uh, it's a real-time data analysis tool. Uh, and the two existing plugins, Vanilla Hadoop and uh, Cloudera distribution, including Hadoop, were updated to the latest versions, and uh, some additional services were supported by the Cloudera plugin as well. Next slide, please. So, uh, in the Sahara UI site, there were a bunch of improvements and bug fixes in Horizon, and uh, we added the guided cluster creation and job execution uh, workflows. So now users could uh, uh, go through the guide on a UI site to create all of the stuff needed for provisioning cluster, uh, including creation of the configuration templates for Sahara, uh, like non-group templates and cluster templates. The same could be done in a guided way with the job executions. Um, all of our object pages in Horizon currently contains filtering uh, for the search, so uh, it's now easily to filter objects by, uh, for example, the cluster or the type of the job, etc. So let's let's move on. Next slide. Next slide, please. Um, <coughs> In uh, Kila, the indirect virtual machine access was implemented. So currently, there is a way to uh, to set some node groups to be a gateways to access uh, other nodes. So the Sahara controllers will use these gateway nodes as a the proxies to access other nodes. It's uh, it's needed to uh, better. Uh, consume the virtual IP addresses, and uh, so you don't need to have uh, an IP addresses assigned to all, all the nodes in mean public IP addresses. And uh, you know, this is uh, Sahara will still be able to access all the nodes. Uh, next slide, please. So the next uh, big feature in Kilo that was implemented is the event log. So this feature is about uh, expanding additional information about the provisioning status and the progress. 
So now, while the cluster provisioning is scaling, you could go to the event log uh, tab in Horizon or through API and uh, get information about the more granular status. For example, what number of uh, machines were already provisioned and uh, what are they waiting for. And uh, it's, uh, it's very helpful not only to track the progress of cluster provisioning, but to debug issues. Uh, issues with the cloud, for example, because if you have uh, uh, network issues, for example, with event log, you could easily see that some of the instances are not accessible via network, for example. Next slide, please. Um, the default template CLI2 was added in Kila to be, uh, to be able to add functionality for end users to provide a default template for different tenants and products in OpenStack. It means that uh, there is a bunch of predefined templates for different plugins in Sahara code base, and you could use the custom ones to generate the default uh, node group and cluster templates for any tenants in your cloud. And uh, the user will be able to use some predefined ready cluster templates, and uh, after that, as you will be able just to create uh, clusters via a few clicks. Comparing to the, to the way with our default templates where you need to create the configuration templates first. So it's, it's a, also the user experience feature. Um, next slide, please. Um, so let's move on to the Liberty plans. And uh, uh, next slide, please. And, uh, and first of all, let's let's talk about the um, new plugins and their feature updates. Um, so the two main distributions of Hadoop, CloudJerry and HDP, uh, will be updated in Liberty Cycle. The CloudJerry distribution of Hadoop uh, gets uh, the latest version supported, 5.4. Uh, and uh, we are going to provide the HDFS and YARN high availability mode support in Liberty for both of the plugins. And we are currently working on the reworked version of the HDP plugin that is now based on the Ambari blueprints comparing to the direct API calls. Uh, so HDP plugin currently supports all of the services as uh, supported by the, its manager named Ambari. And so the whole big Hadoop world stack could be deployed by the HDP plugin, including Storm, Spark, and such embedded to these uh, clusters. And uh, HA supported as well for it, for both YARN and uh, HDFS. And the uh, separated Spark plugin, uh, it will be named Vanilla Spark plugin because it's installed uh, from the upstream without using uh, the deployment engines. Uh, so it's getting support of the latest uh, Wanda 3 version. Next slide, please. In Liberty, one of the uh, huge uh, UX functionalities is the data sources placeholders uh, or templates. Um, this feature provides end users an ability to create the data sources with uh, some variables inside uh, URLs. So it could be a random value or job execution ID embedded to the data source URL, and uh, it means that if you will um, execute a uh, few times a single job, uh, for example, rerun the, one of the job executions, you will receive the outputs if they are specified with the data source templates in a different places, for example, with a randomly generated suffix. Um, next slide, please. So another big feature is uh, to provide the objects uh, update support to the API and uh, UI side. So our goal in Liberty is to enable uh, support for updating all of the objects with a strict validation for not being in use, uh, including validation of the dependencies. For example, you're, you're unable to add, to update the cluster template if there are some clusters created from this cluster template. And in, in addition, to it, in fact, a part of it. We are going to support extended ACLs for our objects, and we agreed to provide uh, two 
types of visibility. Uh, the default one is just a tenant one, like a default object for OpenStack projects. And uh, the public one that will be shared uh, between all the tenants, it's pretty much the same in, as in Glass. And we're going to add a protected uh, field like uh, Glass images to be able to protect your objects like clusters and templates uh, from the accidental removal, for example. Next slide, please. Um, in Liberty, we are planning to separate our integration scenario test tool from the Sahara repository to the separated Sahara test repository. Uh, spec is currently not, not created, it's in progress, but uh, on summit we were agreed on, uh, on doing it and releasing it separately to support the current master and uh, few previous releases of OpenStack to be able to use the latest uh, testing tool uh, with the latest scenarios to test all of the currently supported versions of OpenStack. Next slide, please. Um, so in Liberty Cycle, we were actively working on an overall provisioning reliability, and uh, we'll continue doing it till the end of the cycle and uh, in the next cycles as well, for sure. But in Liberty, the main goal was to um, to support the Keystone sessions, to retry OpenStack client calls think you that if uh, there are some networking issues or some API rates limits uh, issues happening, then we'll always retry uh, and not fail the cluster provisioning. It's, it's extremely important for the huge big data clusters, like a thousand node Hadoop cluster, it means that you don't, uh, you're unable to, to fail the cluster creation if uh, a few instances creation failed. And in Liberty, we already deprecated the direct provisioning engine, and uh, Heat engine is now the only provisioning engine supported by Sahara. It means that uh, all change to the existing engine, uh, I mean, to, to the previous direct engine, will be uh, blocked, and uh, we are going to remove this code that weighs for direct provisioning engine in the early next cycle. Um, so I think it's pretty all about the Sahara Kila use and the Liberty plans and updates. So thank you very much for your attention.